Welcome back to the channel. This is Raventhorn, and tonight we are finally, I know, I know, finally doing our Norskin how-to guide for beginners. So, we're going to dive right into this. I spent a long time debating to do Wolfric or the Ice Troll. Couldn't figure it out, and finally, I just decided to go with Wolfric. Wolfric is the one that I really want to play a Norskin campaign with, so this is kind of be kind of double dipping a little bit. But what I'm going to show you is five steps. That is starting out how they work, small unit tactics, setting up yourself for success, technology and diplomacy, and large army tactics. Interspace in with those five steps, you'll see a lot of little things like you can see. Uh, with the World Walkers here, they have Allegiance to the Gods, Monsters Arcanum, Tribal Confederation, Marauder Outposts. There's a lot of different little things that uh, CA put into this. And then what's really nice is SFO delved into the Norskins and Chaos and said they, they, they need to really change this. this. It needs more fleshing out. So here's the really neat thing. And you're going to see this on turn two. And don't worry. Don't worry, we, we, we will see it, is that uh, they added a whole other mechanic to Wolfric. Wolfric is supposed to be out and about. Um, he's supposed to be traveling the worlds and, and seeing new lands and conquering them for the, for Norse, for, well, for the Chaos Gods. And when CA first released him, he just wasn't that way. I mean, he was, I mean, yes, you could sail over here. That was boom. That was it. But uh, what's really nice is that they added him as a horde mechanic, just like the pirates, just like beastmen, everything like that. So he has whole towns that can build in the Norskin regions. So we're going to be doing that at the same time. Wolfric himself might be traveling around and we might go uh, raid the High Elves for a little bit or raid Bretonia. That's really where you're supposed to be going. Empire. Uh, way over to Lustria. But that is something that you'll see more in the uh, actual playthrough, and that'll be a much slower pace than this, because what we're going to do is we're going to do our a couple of our five steps here, and then um, I'm going to skip ahead in time, show like more of a larger empire, and show like what large unit tactics you can do with them. So first and foremost, how they work. You're going to be always using Marauders. That's their big thing. And then Wolfric, that's his big buff, is Marauder units as well as, let's go into him. He's a born warrior, so he's getting that upkeep uh, percentage, uh, discount for the Marauder units. Um, reinforcement range is, is buffed. And then the actual uh, faction is you get 10% bonus movement, uh, bonus versus large, melee attack, and income from raiding. So you want to play this like a semi-beastman sort of mentality or just evil mentality, but you have or you're going to hopefully have a power base here in the north, and then fight off uh, your enemies in the seas and such. Because now with CA adding in the naval battles, I know really naval battles where you get off the ship and you fight on the shore. Come on, CA. Anyways, so how they work. You're going to be doing a lot of fast-paced little battles uh, with Marauders. And then what you want to do is there's really not much else you can build. Go ahead and grab this. You have the gold. Um, grab some more Marauders. Uh, what's really good is almost every single one of their uh, units will eventually get anti-large that's the entire thing you're we're supposed to be hunting these huge mammoths dragons everything like that and that is what the monsters arcanum is for we'll get that into a little bit later but uh go ahead grab a couple javelins and let's grab some hmm, great weapons don't have much gold we're recruiting but just we're gonna get him a little bit bigger now you're going to see a little bit about the about the research. A lot of this is the monster hunter, so there's your big thing there. You start unlocking such, but we're just going to get our war tools going, and then we might get a couple of these. Actually, I now remember because I was doing a. No, we want we want this first, and then we want to go for here. 
so what that's just going to do is you'll set yourself up later on. So really quickly, you have to go and get your power base going. So that's going to be going up against the scaling faction, which is just another Norse faction. And now we should be able to see this in turn two. It should take effect. Okay, got our units. All right, so immediately you'll see here he's been added into the horde thing. Well, wait a second. What are we supposed to do here? Well, the nice thing is, is that you are actually better off to go into the ocean because that is where he is thrives. And then you'll be able to recruit on the go with Wolfric. He is not tied down anymore to this little piece of land. Go right ahead. Um, the big thing with Norskins is, is when you defeat a uh, another lord of the Norskins' main leader, you can force them to bend the knee. Yes, there will be a lot of that. So, we will go ahead. We have a couple different uh, stances. We can either just, uh, that's your recruitment stance, or this is just your... Uh, bonus movement stance, but it's a hundred and twenty-five percent more bo movement bonus. So we will go over here, and we're just going to take a look at this. Um, the reason why we're going to be looking at this is that one of the big features of Norskins is that they can raise and destroy other factions' um, ports, and what you'll see here is they have coastal settlements. Uh, these are turned into outposts. They will not be, um, if they're just small towns, not a capital town, then they're just going to be like a small outpost. If you're able to take a port town that is a capital city, like Tilia and, uh, those, um, south, southern coast people down there, then you will get a fully fledged, uh, uh, town just like this right here but with the just the small settlements you can only build so many units so horde building we will go ahead grab that and we cannot build any of this because we need more growth so we're gonna hit the intern again that'll be really quick i know this is really quick and everything like that but that is step number one essentially and then small unit tactics will actually go into here and we'll, we'll fight the longship graveyard to kind of show how your early game will look like. Go ahead and you can choose whichever uh, setup you want to for that. Let's see. Okay, now that's that's it. we're in the building mode. So we have to get into our normal mode. Do, 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 do. You can see here, it'll be a decent sized battle. They actually have a couple big year units as well, too. Oh, we're not, we're not there yet. But at least our um, recruitment will be buffed, and we can just start research researching more. Your big thing is, is that almost all of your buildings will be geared towards either upkeep uh, discounts for your armies, or raiding income, slaves and such. That is a big thing. You're going to have to plan out your settlements so where you're double dipping or even triple dipping on your settlements. So when you have a larger empire, you want to do that. But we're going to get that into step three. Right now, we're just trying to get into that step two of doing that small fight. We also have to pay attention because the scalings do have their town up here. They will be sending an army this way because they want to take you out same time that you're trying to take them. So we have to kind of do this really quick and then get back home. Uh, yes, we will to totally take the Beastman Rising just because um, we can prove our might against them. All right, we're going to go ahead and fight this. So essentially for newcomers, how this auto battle resolve means is that depending on your uh, character's experience level, and unit composition, they can either have, what, what, this looks like a 40% chance, up to 80% chance. What it also means is when it's the uh, stripes thing is, 
it's estimating how good of a player you are, that you could be anywhere more than this 40% chance mark. Okay? So they're essentially saying that if you just auto-resolve this, you can take heavy losses, you can take not-so-heavy not losses. It really depends on your armor composition and the auto-resolve magic numbers. I don't like doing that too, too much in my campaigns. If it's an overwhelming victory, I will auto-resolve it, but most of the time, I'll go ahead and fight it because that's just that's the where we're, we're going to play. So let's get into this battle, and we'll start doing some small unit tactics. Now, uh, I've been getting questions, you know, what do you consider small unit tactics versus large unit tactics? Um, this is about the size of an army that uh, I would say is small unit, is where every unit's really, really precious. Um, you're not doing a lot of throwaways. Um, large army unit tactics, you know, that that's going to be your full stacks, uh, where you have to just really plan out, you know, divisions of your army, things like that. This is your main line. These are going to be your Marauders. They are just shielded. They're decent melee combatants. Uh, and their big thing is they have a bonus for large. <gasps> what do you know? Bonus for large? This is going to be your Marauder Ber Berserkers. They are going to be your heavy damage dealing uh, people. They have both bonus for large and bonus versus... I know I saw it. They have bonus versus infantry as well. They're going to be your flanking force, your really early on flanking force. Here is, of course, your uh, big weapons. You can see massive axes, maces, they're armor piercing. And <gasps> what do you know? Bonus versus large. I sense a theme, don't you? And then this is your... Basically, this is the extent of your range units, is throwing spears. And when they're done with it, they th pull out axes, daggers, whatever they to do, because first and foremost, they are marauders. Now, this is your answer to basically anything that you want to take down is werewolves, or they call them skin wolves, but we all know what they look like. They're werewolves. Anti-large, frenzy, regeneration, and wolven vigor. So... The longer your units fight, whether it's uh, Rage for all of the different Marauder units, the longer they fight, the larger the bonuses. It'll keep going. So every 30 seconds it keeps going and it changes into a stance. But once you stop fighting, it goes away. You have to start over again. Alright, so let's uh, get our units grouped up. On simple unit taxes like this, you can just uh, lock them in. So here, here we're going to have two different uh, hard-hitting units on our flanks. We also have uh, our Marauder Ice Wolf Chariots. They have a melee attack, and they do have bonus for large, but where you're going to really see is their damage is supposed to be dealt with their throwing axes. I don't like their Chariots. But that is not for me to say. I think a chariot should be plowing into people. And they just don't have enough uh, hit points. Right here you can see that they just don't have very many hit points. They are a weaker chariot. All right, there's our wolves. There's the things. So, let's start the battle. They obviously outnumber us in a large line. So, we will just go ahead and we'll move up. And you can press spacebar to see, you know, where your units are going. Get Wolfric in there. Because he has a very special ability where he summons Seafang, his legendary warship, onto land. Don't ask me how. Don't know. <laughs> now you'll see here, one of the big things is about these chariots is they do not have skirmish mode. Because they're supposed to be melee chariots. But they're ranged chariots. So the conundrum.
go ahead and you start attacking. Uh, it's not that big of a tactic thing here. And we'll just send our wolves out on the wide. Oops. Yeah, they're going to get a nice little flank here. Go ahead and get into their flank that with that. And then what we can do is we can charge in with our chariots. Here's Wolfric. We're going to go ahead and use his special ability, which is a line ability. Click and drag where you're wanting the ship to go. We're just going to aim it this way. And hopefully... Da, 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 Okay, yeah, there you go. And then just have Wolfric charge in there. So, have your wolves run them down. Chariots are in here. Uh, not really doing much. But your Berserkers are going to kind of just uh, tear through anything that they want. We can get in over here. Get Wolfric going. Having a little bit more of a harder fight. Spears versus great weapons. Who knows? And you just want to kind of run down your enemies. Uh, use your fast moving wolves. Get around. Uh, don't forget. Yeah, here we go. Yep, just pull out our chariots. And what we can have is our chariots just to continue the fight on these great weapons. Uh, get some morale shock going. Uh, and that way they'll just start running them down. There's our spears kind of going into there. So, translation, just do that sweeping motion that, you know, almost every army can benefit from. That sweeping attack where you engage your front line and then start trying to push those corners to get around their flanks. That's a very basic tactic. Look, that's what this is for. Basic, new beginners. This is what you guys need to help yourself just do better. You can take much more losses. Just do a straight line. Fight. But you have to know that you have to take advantage of the slow lines. But you have to know how to take advantage of this, their slow lines of infantry. Use your advantages what you have. That's why these legendary lords are here. That you're supposed to use your chariot, use your wolf kin, uh, skin wolves to get around the flanks, do some heavy charges, break them. All right. Now, when you take over a settlement with the Norse skins, you can either occupy or sack, basic options, or you can raise the settlement and dedicate it to one of the chaos gods. And why that's important is, is that you get different allegiances with the different gods. Now, you'll notice that, well, wait a second. It's supposed to be Korn, Zinch, Slanesh, and Nurgle. But uh, they don't call them that. In the Norskin mythology, they call them something different. So you have for the eagle, the serpent, the crow, and the hound. The hound is corn. The crow is Nurgle. The serpent is Slanesh. And the eagle is Zinch. Now, each one has different bonuses. But every time that you send a idol to one of the other chaos gods, the other gods, you get minus one for favor. But you get plus six. So if you do this right, you can be raising them all up a little bit. And as you raise them up, Let's say you want to go for the Hound, Corn, Blood for the Blood God. Uh, once you get 30 favor with the Hound, you will get a level 1 bonus. And that can continue to level 2 and level 3. And then you will unlock a unique legendary unit. So with the Hound, you'll get a Hell Cannon unit. Uh, with the Lord of Change, you'll get uh, a Mighty Lord of Change, Azrak the Maze Keeper. With the crow, uh, a devastating plague will be unleashed across the world. Your faction being immune. And then the serpent, 
a specialist chaos sorcerer kahar the tormentor will come into your pool so completely you can change your faction almost every time you start this faction over again is you can do a different theme you can do different ways of playing but because this settlement is within our regional you know province we'll take it we'll take it over And then, so we have to level up Wolfric. Wolfric has the pretty much the same abilities everyone else has, just in different flavors. But, you can always get your rank 12 ones, that that's really where the lords take off. So you always, you start off with Sea Fang. That's your yellow line, the starting ability. And that's if you want to make him a great fighter. He is a great fighter. You want to make him a great fighter. Okay? But... I always go with Route Marcher because it gives that bonus to, to movement. And then uh, you can start looking at some of these, but uh, the only one that I'll tell you to maybe look into is possibly that it's a spoiler line. Uh, and why we want to get over to here is that he starts buffing up the Skin Wolves with this blue line. And then remember, Lightning Strike, Lightning Strike, Lightning Strike. Um, this eliminates when you attack another army it eliminates a secondary reinforcement army for both you and for their enemy that can be completely devastating to you or it can be completely overwhelming to, against your enemy all right we don't want to get this look at what the abilities do oh man that's just so cool can we use mammoths yet no can we use skin wolves and i love skin wolves yeah, that's the best flavor of the month for me. Uh, I will go ahead and grab this because we do have a unit of skin wolves and they're going to be our main damage dealers for quite some time until we can actually get larger units and such. Uh, we have some extra gold. Uh, we can get some marauder hunters. So these guys are armor piercing missiles. Uh, these are going to actually replace your uh, javelins. Probably sort of it's kind of up to you uh i'm gonna get berserkers and some marauder hunters just because they have armor piercing and then i have the longer range javelins for anti-large so that's really good you can mix it and match it to to a point where your in melee your guys are going to handle themselves the only way that they're going to, to not take them to really handle themselves is when they come up against heavily armored units like the Empire and Bretonia and they have more of their high tier units. Low tier units you'll be fine against. Higher tier units um, you may take some heavy losses because you will never have as much armor unless you get up to the Marauder Champions and possibly get to recruit some Chaos Warriors. You will not always be able to recruit Chaos Warriors. Those are a special thing, mostly f reserved for the Chaos Faction, but I think there's a couple ways you can get them. Your Marauder, Marauder Champions is where it's at, though. That's your almost answer to uh, Chaos Warriors. So we'll leave it that way. Uh, we can't really build anything here yet, uh, and we're going to have to run back over here as soon as we can. We're probably going to use uh, Wolfric's ability to start running over there. Now we have research. You can start, uh, and this is where we're going to start setting ourselves up for success and technology and diplomacy, where it starts to mingle a little bit. You want to start researching things that are going to overall be useful long term. So, and and what kind of theme of army are you going to go for? Uh, you don't necessarily need to go into this just yet because it unlocks level 1 monster hunts. Now, we've talked to that about that enough that we should probably go into it right here. Monster Hunter. If you do this, you have to unlock this. This is your level 1. It's going to give you a miniature quest to hunt down. Uh, you can see here. Dragons. Or Chaos Dragons. Uh, Cygors. Uh, dragon ogres, giant spiders, giants, uh, other dragons. That, that looks like a wood elf dragon here. Mammoths, uh, giant bats. Yeah. 
Great Eagles, Dinosaurs, Hydras, and uh, <laughs> Skaven. Because why not, right? Anyways, that's how you start doing those. That's not really that important because is your little army going to be going up against Dragon just right now? Probably not. Uh, this is where I'm going to recommend looking into because it's going to help you uh, ravage places like here's the destruction of Bretonia. Uh, you can get definitely you know look into a couple of these before going into the higher tier unless you're just like, you know run right to Bretonia then maybe you need it. But uh, now we're going to look into diplomacy. Yes, you can trade with Norskins. We have the Vanaheimings uh, as uh, we have a non-aggression. They respect strength. And pretty much all of these guys have underdog. Except for the Wintertooth. Which he's supposed to be your main foe in uniting the Norskin tribes. But these ones all have underdog. And why I mention the underdog is that they're willing to join a stronger faction. But strength is key with the Norskins. You will probably never be able to confederate with another Norskin tribe without fighting them. Got to prove your dominance. Okay? So, uh, we will go ahead uh, and don't... Like, you can possibly, you know, talk to the beastmen. Like, hey, don't attack me. So, we can take that. But that's just going to tick off all the other people alive out there. But we really can't care. We just can't care about that because you're not going to be the good guy. This is very much where you raid, where you take over other people's such, um, such <laughs> crap, whatever, and then you use that. So we'll hit one more intern. You can kind of see how we set ourselves up. And then I'm going to skip ahead in time where I've been playing a little bit longer. And you can kind of see us uniting a little bit. Um, and then we can actually show you a larger scale battle with some other units. So, yep, we'll make it a little bit harder for ourselves. You know how they stand. And we'll just get over here. And we'll go ahead and start getting the Norse moot. All right, see, there it, there it was. There's Felmer and Ingerson. We have uh, reinforcements, so we might be having to do that uh, larger scale battle uh, a little bit sooner than what we wanted to. Yes. Why I say a larger scale battle is because we're just going to have the reinforcements for all these. So you have to manage those I large armies. Uh, but if not, uh, we'll go ahead. Let's just see here. I wanted to go into buildings. So this is how you're really going to set yourself up for success. Start looking ahead at your units and what you need. Because this is Ice Strike 4, this is your capital city, you can do the larger buildings as you can. So this is where you can get your frost worms and things like that. So now we're going to go over here to military support. So this one unlocks you to be able to hire the uh, well the larger units. This is uh, Raw Champions and Norskin Whalers, which are basically javelin infantry, but they're huge. <laughs> Um, and that's how you unlock your larger units. So you're going to eventually need those. But you want to look at your offerings. You can see here that if you have this building, uh, you can uh, have income from buildings that are improved. You can recruit Norskin Ice Trolls, which you have to have this building to be able to recruit them instead of just Norskin Trolls. Offerings of War, that's an improved version of it. Warriors Arena. You can see here that starts affecting own armies and province and own armies and province there. Stone monolith. This is your walls. How you can get those. You have to get up to here. Uh, actually, no. Your... Oh, this is capital city. So let's, let's poof over here to the smaller settlement. I don't think you ever get walls with the marauders. Because normally it has a little line here that says provides walls. So I don't think you ever actually get walls. Uh, what I wanted to point out was here is your small town places. And they're kind of different uh, than these. So you see here that the the Victic, 
the ruinous altar worship tree can go all the way up so you want to kind of build that in your capital city but in your smaller towns you can start kind of double dipping these buildings so income generated 100 and income from rating plus two percent faction wide that starts it has a hidden i think you know line over how far you can go but you can just start doing that as much as you can you can uh, research rate is plus three percent province-wide growth attrition uh upkeep goes down so you want to start double dipping there and uh, spread out your recruitment centers to get you know warhounds are very good uh they're another small uh small scale uh, cavalry your Norse and ice wolves are stronger because they have less units and then that's how you're going to get more skin wolves and you're going to want to focus on them because wolf Rick does have bonuses to them anyways let's see what happens here to these uh, scalings What's he gonna do? Is he gonna attack? All right. All right he's always raid. All right. I'm going to show you how you can entice a unit or an, or an enemy army into possibly going into a battle that's not necessarily good for them. They they won't come and fight you. They have you have a reinforcement army. Will they attack your town because it's all there? Go ahead, move, and they go into ambush stance. You can always m use your mouse here to explore where the best place to put up an ambush. Now, you can't get in the red ring. That's their air deployment or army control. You can't deploy in there, but you could get, like, really close. See how it says hilly light force? Ambush success chance is 80%. Well, yes... That's great, um, but if we can go right here, see this yellow line? Oh, we get that yellow line back. Come on. Anyways, there were, is if, if you look right here, this line of control around your town, that is your area deployment for that town. So if we can get them to come this way, we'll get an ambush on them, and we'll have reinforcements from the town. It'll be a little bit easier for us, because we want them to come over here, because we also now have a small-time quest for the glory of corn. So, let's do this, and then we can get into, I'll skip ahead, about an hour's of time, and, and go from here. But I, this will this will be key. What do you want? You want peace? No! Ambush. Alright. So, the army was failed to see our ambush. I won't be fighting this one because I'd rather concentrate on a larger army composition with more advanced units than just a repeat of last time's battle. And we have pretty much... We, we overwhelmingly control. Uh, when you do an ambush... You get a different type of map uh, layout where you can deploy all the way around here, but the enemy can only deploy right here. Now, they will have an area of exit because they can escape, but uh, yeah, we'll just hit here. And we overwhelmingly defeat them. Decisive victory. We only lost 208. That's spread across all your units. And we will enslave the captives, kill the captives, or sacrifice captives. Uh, we don't really need the extra money. Uh, we're not going to be doing a lot of fighting, so we'll just take the uh, replenishment that just helps us. Now, we're going to show you something. Alright, we defeated the faction's major warlord. We can have a couple choices. We can either form a confederation, bend the knee, uh, execute the enemy warlord, this minuses our diplomatic relations. The enemy faction leader is killed permanently. They have to get a new enemy faction leader. And you get 5,000 treasury. Or you can release the enemy warlord. 
and you get 2,500 treasury. Here's what you want to do. This is how you're going to decide on which ones you want. Does the towns that are offered benefit you immediately? Or does the towns offered give you more enemies to deal with? Now that's a big thing, is that if you already have enemies around your other enemies, then those towns that you just got from the Confederation will be immediately under attack. Right now we have no other enemies except these guys, so we can definitely form the Confederation, or we could kill them and get the extra money. You can see that we have 9,000 gold because of the battles we've been fighting and we haven't been able to build very much. So we will conform the confederation. But this is a different sort of mechanic that the Norskins get. So now, poof, the uh, Scalings have confederated with us. And now we, have, we get their lord, Sila Henderson. Uh, this is kind of cool. Let's see, he has a distinguishing scar. So all chaos corruption is plus one. That's actually pretty good. I mean, he's a pretty decent Chaos Lord. Well, Norsekin Lord. Uh, and why we would confederate with the Scalings is because they controlled uh, Doom Keep, which was part of our province, and now we have a united province. Okay? Now, one thing you will notice is that there is no way of doing a uh, province selection. That doesn't exist for Norskins. Uh... What we're going to do, they already have a small watchtower here. Let's go immediately buff that up because we're now exposed to a lot more enemies. And as you can see here, they uh, they don't like us. The Varg don't like us. The uh, Hellspire tribe does not like us. The only tribe that likes us right now is the Vanaheimnings. And they can either turn on you. Don't sus Don't. Don't depend on long-term allegiances with the Norskins. We'll go ahead and drop him in there. Uh, let's actually see if there's any other lords that we could possibly recruit that would be cooler. Now, you're going to get Marauder Chieftains. That's just your basic uh, such. Here's that, uh, that special lord if you get all the way to the eagle. Okay, we don't get any of those right now. Because sometimes you can get uh, other uh, lore types, but right now you can't. So, if you do this, we immediately say that he is dedicating himself to a god line. If you do corn, you can only ever go here. Oh, no, wait, that's the... <laughs> that's uh, Sun Ash. Here's corn. Here's the um, Nurgle, and here's Eagle. Uh, for this guy, just because we're playing around, let's go with Corn. Let's give him a horse. We'll buff that up. We'll Infamous Marauder, and... Route Marcher. We'll have him kind of be our defensive lord, so that Swelling of Doom, while we're taking that, is because the growth will increase our province. And then you can just play around, like this, probably right here. Okay? Decent line of a level 5 lord. And then we can go ahead and we can add uh, some marauders and let's give it some hounds. Okay. All right. So now we're going to go ahead and jump up through some time and see how far we can get. And I'll try and get some better units, show off uh, a little bit more tactics with that. And then uh, I'll see you in a little bit. Welcome back. So I wanted to show off a little bit. It hasn't been too, too long between where we uh, first uh, paused. But this is your building so that you can do in a Wolfric's building selector. Uh, this is your invading fleet. This is your main line. This is your recruitment tree for most of your units. To still do your very... Uh, 
specialized units, you're going to have to go back to your towns. But you really shouldn't, you know, only ever uh, build on Wolfric. But this allows you to uh, replenish your army, uh, things like that. But here's where it gets really kind of fun. You can actually start building these uh, boosters. So, goat horns. That's your sails, steer boards, hulls, and figureheads. So you can start building them to be more where this provides public order and unit experience. This is going to be your unit, uh, horde unit recruitment capacity and income from sacking and looting settlements. This is your steering, upkeep, chaos corruption, and goat horns, campaign movement bonus, and enemy leadership. I'm going to go ahead and grab... Uh, goat horns because we want some extra campaign movement and then on land it just looks like the chaos symbol but on the ocean it's just the boat uh so yeah see you in a little bit welcome back so we are back here and what we've been doing is we've been uniting the norsekin tribes and here's the big deal throg has actually come from the east and is now attacking us well he was attacking the other Norsekin tribes in the north and he was uniting them and so what i did is i made a deal with our long-term allies uh to our west the vanaheimnings and i said hey i would go to war against throg for a deal that you become my vassals you give me money and trade they said yes so, Throg immediately turned around and came back towards us. However, we were able to catch him in kind of a sort of a trap. And why I mean sort of a trap is that I actually put Wolfric in ambush stands outside of a village that I had reinforcements in. Well, they're playing smart where Throg moved and encircled the village. And so we're not able to get our reinforcements. However, Throg's army is extremely beat up. The only thing that will be a challenge is, of course, Throg himself versus Wolfric. Um, so we're going to have to really use our skin wolves here. So this will be a really good battle. And this is what I think would be kind of like large army tactics where you have, an, you know, enemy reinforcements, uh, enemy army, and yourself. We haven't really been able to recruit too many high tier units. There was a possibility that we could have. However, um, with the way things happened, it was better to uh, just recruit more small scale units or uh, small technology tree units. We'll put her in. What we really want to do is hit Throg as he's coming into the battle. And what we really want is Wolfric to be able to fight uh, Throg when he has reinforcements of the Skin Wolves. Uh, we're going to need our Marauder Chariot actually to probably play a little bit of distraction. And we need our other... Basically, we're really going to want to be using our anti-large. So we're going to get in here. Get right in their faces. We need to get Throg. We need to get our... Get going on here. Get going on here. It's really trying to crush... Uh, we need...
what we want to do is we want to try and table their army as best we can because they're so close. Throg is taking a huge amount of beating. And what we're going to do is we're going to try and get our army here. And we're going to just try and remember to uh, use your, the way you can design your army is by the movement bonus, not movement bonus, but movement angles to really, so we're going to actually, we don't need, a uh, Throg looks like he's already been um, broken off and we can now just roll up against, so our berserkers are going to be taking some damage. Let's get over here. Let's get, actually get that going. So we've we've managed to really pummel the reinforcements. Uh, what we can do now is start moving up our throwing axes. Uh, yeah, so Throg's army is now defeated. So now we have to just save our berserkers from dying off. Move over here. Get get your fast units going. Get hitting those flanks. Use our uh, beasts and chariots. Uh, don't be afraid to throw in your uh, range units into a, a fight because they are decent melee combatants. They're much different than, per se, uh, well, your normal. And we're going to uh, run off these guys because that was really easy. Uh, we caught them in a great, great position. We were able, managed to get Throg tabled. Uh, use the bounds of the, ar the the map to your advantage. If you see, uh, as we saw, Throg's army was actually starting in our position, go ahead. If you know you can fight them, which it wasn't a problem of just fighting Throg's army. It was the problem of fighting them all at the same time. But because we were able to catch Throg uh, outside of his reinforcements and we were able to table them. And what I mean by table, that's the term of forcing the enemy to rout off the map and thus removing them from the battle. Uh, so we were able to do that. Looks like we'll be able. We saved our berserkers. That's good. Um, just go ahead and throw. And we're just gonna kill off their. Just you know, killing off some extra units. But I wanted to just take time to talk. You're able to hit. You can see this devastating um, little skirmish right here. Their trolls were managed to get slain with our spearmen. Their wolves. Uh, our a great axeman were able to hold, and then of course our our berserkers gave their lives more than happily. Uh, they gave their lives to uh, hold off the enemy and reinforcements, which allowed Wolfric to end the battle. So uh, let's see what uh, if we can force Throg to bend the knee. So because we defeated Thaw, we got bonus first large plus weapon strength, 10%. So let's see here. Let's see what happens. And our allies are at war with Bretonia. So that would be, if we were continuing the campaign, our next real big objective. But I really wanted to unite Norska underneath Wolfric's banner. Which there is a couple other minor tribes, but I really wanted to get this peninsula. Good start base for everyone. And now we can uh, form a confederation because we defeated Throg in battle. So he must bend the knee to our banner and join us. We will also have to get rid of some armies. <laughs> so uh, we'll go ahead and uh, grab some units. Oops. He... And he is so expensive. Uh, and that's because he has really high tier units of the of those Norskins. 
uh, what we can do is probably all right let's see, let's see what we can do we can grab these two units dismiss him let's see who else we have we got a hero another hero all right so this is just our lore that we've been having uh, all right, so we'll have to get you rid of some units, but that was it would be really if you were continuing on. Uh, I will go ahead and end the uh, how-to guide. Uh, this is when you'll go, start going in, making sure you have lots of slaving camps, uh, lots of plunder halls. Uh, you see here that we've started, uh, we're getting uh, more larger tier units. We have to have uh, certain uh, units going. Uh, Acelings, Conclave has been upgraded. Uh, we were able to unite the Varg by forcing them to bend the knee. And then you'll have a choice. You can either start going here and start raiding into Kislev, or you can start raiding Bretonia, uh, the Elves, start going down to Lustria, or you can actually start going up to the north and uniting the tribes of the far north and uh, Dark Elf's place, which is another really good place to get more land, more reinforcements. That would be a good place to send, like, say we, we use Throg to do that for us, and then Wolfer can actually start just going raiding into the enemy uh, lands. And all the while, the thing with the Vanaheimnings is that they have to pay us tribute. So that's a good... Don't be afraid of doing that. That is fine. Uh, anyways... Thank you so much for watching this video. Please do watch my other how-to guides. Uh, they'll be popping up here in a little bit. Uh, check out my other playthrough campaigns where it's a lot more detailed and step-by-step -step because it's more of an actual uh, campaign play. Uh, do keep an eye out for other how-to guides. Uh, those will be coming up probably the next one, probably either next week or so. And uh, please comment below which other how-to guy uh, factions you'd like to see, or uh, message me on Facebook on join by the joining the group there, uh, or Discord. Uh, I'm always available there. Reach out to me, private message me. It doesn't matter. I love uh, talking to fans, uh, seeing how I do. If you have tips or tricks that you'd like to recommend me, say hey, you know Raven, you, you're doing this well, but you should be trying this. I, I want to hear that, you know, I want to be involved in the community, not just, you know, okay, this is my only way that I'm doing it. You guys either suck it or, you know, suck it. No, that's not how I am. Uh, I prefer having much more um, upbeat attitude. Uh, like I said, if you ever watch my thank you video, my long-term fans will have seen it. Uh, but that's, that's the sort of stuff I go through, um, and I'm just improving myself. So you guys are all part of that. Again, thank you for watching. Please tune in next time with my other videos. And until later, uh, have a great night. See you later.